Hi, welcome back, Jeff Coughlin. As you can see, we're um, into the deckling part of the process, so I just thought I'd take you through how I approach this. Um, it might be worth having a quick look on YouTube, actually, because Humbrol have produced a really decent set of videos uh, on there. And there's a useful one showing how to apply decals using decal fix. And that's uh, the way I'm going at the moment with this particular project, using that particular approach. And so we've got some decal fix here, which comes in a nice big bottle got a little container here in which I've applied some decal fix and about seven or eight minutes ago I popped in the two top wing roundels, upper wing roundels into the decal fix so no water just decal fix at the moment and over here you can see at the back I've just got a little palette in which I've got decal fix again and I've cut up some of the uh, the markings just to help get them uh, lined up and underway in the softening process because the idea is that that you soak the decals in the decal fix and then after they take about a good seven or eight minutes to loosen up and then they are ready to slide off the model off the backing paper and onto your model so it just speeds up the whole process if we've um, uh, got them lined up in a bit of a production line really so i'm just going to add a little bit more decal fix to the main pot here and this stuff is reusable so it's going to go back in the, what I don't use is going to go back into the bottle afterwards, or once I have used it I should say. So I'm just going to take uh, the first of the decals out of there. In fact I'm just going to transfer the two underwing roundels into the main reservoir over there. Okay so here we go we've got our uh, model. Uh, I'll just get a little, little tissue to hand, always good to have that. Okay, out the workbench so it's all nice and uh, clear to start with and we're going to apply the first decal to this upper side here so for that I've got uh, a nice uh, soft brush uh, for the process and we wet the area fairly liberally that's got to uh, take the decal they do say on the uh, video on YouTube that you don't necessarily need to gloss the model well, okay, that might be true, um, and good luck to you if you can do that, but maybe I'm a bit old and die-hard, but for me, I'm afraid, I think it's better to decal, uh, to gloss up the model, so that uh, we don't end up uh, with any silvering where air gets beneath the surface. And mostly, you, can probably, you might be able to get away with that, but the bottom line is that um, I think it's safer if you gloss the model, much safer. Uh, so all we do is take the decal, slide it off into position as we've done there get rid of the backing paper you certainly get a bit of time here to manipulate the decal into the right position so I'm just going to make sure that that is uh, that's right personally I'll no problem using my finger for that just get it about yeah it's about right like that I think that's about about it that seems about good and then just using the brush you can just work the surface a little bit just to make sure that there's no air trapped under there just checking the position all the time because it is moving ever so slightly uh, but that's okay there's a little raised um, I don't know some sort of rivet thing that sits underneath the back or is sitting underneath the back of the decal about here so I'm just applying plenty of decal fix to that and once it all dries it's going to um, settle down quite nicely over that so this is where you need to have a bit of faith a bit of patience and largely just leave that decal to uh, to dry out now and it will come and draw itself down over that recess detail which is the whole uh, main part of this uh, process really of going this this decal fix route um, okay so that's number one so let's have a look we can get get this second one in position then now get a bit more of that decal fix here
we go. I'm just going to get this in position. It's important. It's useful always to work um, with similar decals. So in other words, opposites at the same time, so you can get everything lined up and make sure that there's no, um, there's no, nothing's out of alignment. I think it's just useful to kind of work at the same time, the same process with that. Okay, just having a good look here. Probably going to go out a fraction. What I'm using actually now as a point of reference is just that. Everything you can see that? You've got that little panel line there in that sort of position. It's quite useful, I think, to get. There we go. I think that's. I'm not wholly convinced, actually. It might be different on both sides then actually. So I'm going to come bring that in a little bit. Okay, that looks uh, that looks better. So just using a tissue, you can just take some of the some of the excess away there. Don't particularly want that all over the outside of the. Make sure there's no air underneath there. Okay. Right, I think they're in the right position. So there we go. Got our first two two Randalls on. And it's just a case of steadily working away and working around the model to um to finish off the application really. It's gonna take some time, so that might be a bit tedious for you to sit there watching me do that. So I'll get on, press on and finish those, and we can kind of go from there. Uh, just perhaps to say that um, as you use each of the decals from their, their little uh, reservoirs here, what I'll do is cut some more um, and uh, that have got to go on and then add those to the receptacles there. So I'll just uh, keep the whole process moving uh, nice and quickly. So while the decals dry, I thought I'd have a look at the spinner, which we've now sprayed uh, matte red, which is good. So that's on and that's well dried. One little thing I found was that uh, the back plate here um, was quite a good fit, but it just protruded ever so slightly. So all I did was push it into place and with a couple of tiny little bits of uh, PVA, just secured it in there for the, uh, for the moment and then just uh, sanded it uh, so that these location holes uh, didn't stand proud of, of the hole from the black paint. So basically it just sort of uh, smoothed it all in so it all fared in nicely and then sprayed it. Um, but of course the question now is we've got to do something with that because I think it's just hopeless leaving it as it is. It just looks a bit, um, just a bit boring <laughs> not very worn not very weathered i can't imagine that a spinner in the desert uh, theater of operations wouldn't have um weathered reasonably uh, reasonably well so i've got a few little tools i use for this uh, initially we're going to give it a bit of a brush with an old toothbrush and then after that going to do a little bit of a dust um, with an old brush that i use for dry brushing it's just got some old uh, remnants really of a bit of pastel chalk in there but really nothing to write home about it's there's virtually nothing in there but it's just about kind of beginning some, some uh, dirtying up of it um, we're definitely going to use a pencil going to do a little bit of subtle chipping and we'll use that an ordinary graphite pencil that's all that is going to use that to do a little bit of chipping um, and then we might do a little bit of brighter chipping with this silver pencil which um, I've I've got here it's just a Faber Castell one, but we'll have a look at that in, in a minute. So let's just uh, first of all just distress very very slightly the um, the spinner, and all you do, all I do with this is just brush it from the tip down, 
and immediately it goes from a matte to a satin finish, which for a kickoff is exactly what I'm looking for. I think these things look much, much better with a, with a nice satin finish rather than the plain flat. Doesn't need much. Um, so there we go. So immediately we've got a nice slight sheen going on there. Um, just a little bit of a, a general sort of grabbing up with um, this old brush and really there's nothing. I think all I use that for, I'm pretty sure I, ages and ages and ages ago, there was a bit of pencil graphite that I just um, uh, rubbed it on a bit of sandpaper and I just used that for uh, a bit of gentle uh, weathering. So there's just the remnants of some old pencil graphite on there that just if you just dust the finish just gives it a very very slightly dirty look not, not uh, hugely but just enough and again just around the tip going back we've now got there we go so we've now got a slightly ever so slightly kind of grubby um spinner now that's also satin finish which is good and then I think I think the fun bit for me is using an ordinary pencil pencil so a pencil um, just with a gentle bit of a stabbing motion just to almost tipper in on the end there just want to apply some very subtle you can see that some very very subtle little chips and scuffs a bit more heavily around the tip Go mad just enough that when you look at it, you'll just notice them. And again, just around the edge of those propeller recesses. back to the tip obviously the more you do that the more severe you can make the effect but I don't want to go severe I just want enough I don't think you can see that if you can just hold that up to the light just getting that occasional reflection going of those chips and I think a neat little trick just to capture the edge let's get this right the right angle here we go around the back of the spinner here just with this around the edge and these are exactly the same techniques that I use for the propeller blades the metal blades so again when you would just look at that and it'll be on the front of the hurricane it's looking at side on you'll just get a glint of metallic just around the edge there and it Again, I think we can just afford to add a little bit of tiny bit of extra chipping around that front edge. Yeah, it's logical, isn't it? Where it would have uh, weathered a bit more. one of my favorite little techniques is you've got to be a little bit careful you don't get carried away it's quite um <laughs> quite therapeutic and it's easy to get carried away but look i mean essentially you know that's pretty much there i don't see any great need to go much beyond that um i'm not actually going to use um the silver pencil this time i don't think it's necessary so there we go um let's get the, uh, sorry, I didn't get the light in there so just so you can see this Hopefully you can see that nicely. Just um, just come out really quite nicely, I think. So there we go. That's just the spinner. And we just need to spray out the propeller blades with a, a really dark grey, uh, not black, dark grey. Put on some yellow tips and then we can uh, do the same with that. The decals have now been applied to our Hawker Hurricane. And... I think what's really impressive is the decal fix seems to have worked really well, which is, is nice. The decals have gone down uh, really well. 
Um, no sign that I can see of any carrier film, which is excellent. And as you can see here, perhaps if I bring that in, try and catch that maybe in the light, not sure it's a bit tricky to see, but the decal has certainly gone down over those recessed uh, panel lines, which is excellent. So all in all, um, successful application so far. Um, and one little trick I found is that if you, at this stage, seal the decals in, that's a really good um, good thing to do. It seems to just, um, well, do that. It seals them in, um, and then when that's all dry, we'll leave it again for a day. And then what we can do um, is decide when to apply the finishing matte coat, because this is definitely going to be quite a heavily matted airframe. Uh, certainly most of the machines that I've seen in the pictures from this theatre of operations were heavily uh, heavily faded and matted down in terms of their finish. So we'll get to that uh, later on. So that's uh, that's no problem uh, at all. Um, but in order that we can get to that stage, what we need to do is just seal these in. So gloss varnish, decals, gloss varnish, once these are all perfectly dry. And I've actually left these, in fact, it's been 48 hours for various reasons since uh, these decals went on. And of course, there's no doubt of that they are um, fully dry and, and uh, in place. So all we'll do is we'll just come back um, in a minute with the uh, gloss varnish, the Humbrol acrylic um, gloss varnish, and we can uh, seal those in. So I'm just gonna go and do that. Just literally, I'll do it from the can, quick squirts like we did before um, over the surface. Just make sure you just keep the can moving. Spray from about 20, uh, well, let's see, I don't know, 20 to 30 centimeters away, something like that. And um, that's it, we'll leave it again for a day. The varnish will, self-level which is great and then tomorrow we can come back and, and look at where we go in terms of further um, weathering in terms of things like washing are we going to apply a wash uh, how are we going to do that what are we going to use that kind of thing and we can go from there and uh, slowly get towards completion which is not too far away now and just moving on to a little bit more weathering and this time we're looking at the exhaust stacks so all I've done is sprayed those Umbrella Acrylic 70, this kind of brick red color. And as you can hopefully see, it yes, gives a really nice kind of rich, deep brownie <coughs> color, which uh, these, these things often were. Often were. Um, one little thing I have done, that we didn't spot that, if I just, just try and bring that in there, just on the end of each of the um, sort of exhaust openings, which you, you, you've got, I've just put a little dot of black paint to simulate the hole itself. So when you look from any sort of distance, it just looks like there's a kind of a black hole disappearing into each of the three different stacks. So that's um, that's a little uh, little tip, I guess, you can do to, to simulate uh, a hole when in fact you haven't got a hollowed out exhaust uh, tube in effect. So that's, um, that's the first part of that. And then what we're gonna do is there's a few, um, few little mini steps we can do just to try and enhance these a bit further. I think one of them is to initially apply a bit of kind of grime and dirt and mank to that and for that all I do is use a bit of pencil graphite and all I've done here is literally just taking a pencil, ordinary, ordinary pencil this, HB pencil, and just rub that down onto the uh, bit of wet and dry paper there, bit of sandpaper, and then you create some nice dust. Which you can, which you can use, and just taking that. Um, remember that old uh, brush we were using just to apply a bit of that uh, grime to the spinner. Well, it's just the same brush here, and this is how you end up with a, a little brush like this that's ready to do a bit of this kind of weathering. Don't need to go too mad here, but all I do is just start a little bit of process and just try and make these just a little bit more grubby, particularly around the areas uh, where the exhaust would come out. So it's, it's a work in progress this, so it's just a sort of start of a 10 to try and provide a bit of that and also a little bit of a metallic look to these stacks. This is why you just need to go a little bit careful here. Um, don't wanna go mad, but the broad idea of this is just to make them look a bit more like metallic, uh, or metal I should say, rather than just uh, plain brown. If you just sprayed these brown, I don't think they would look uh, particularly interesting at all, really. So, literally, for me, it's kind of about 
about that. Nothing much more really than that at this stage. So hopefully what you can see, hopefully that's coming out in focus. Really hard to tell, but hopefully you can see that. Um, what you've got is just this slight metallic look now to those exhaust stacks, which you can see there. And then um, what you find uh, quite often is um, a bit of kind of much lighter gray or sometimes even as much as white residue that you get um, that builds up from the, the, I think it's the lead oxide or whatever it is that comes out of the uh, exhaust itself, that builds up on the rear two of these stacks. You wouldn't have it from the first one because it wouldn't have come from anywhere. So logically it would be on the, on the second two. And for that, again, all we can uh, do is perhaps take some of the um, Umbral white weathering powder, which you can see here, which comes in these neat little bottles, which are secured very well with a bit of um, plastic covering. Again, we'll just take one of our other little weathering brushes, if we can find one. Here we go. So let's just, just take a little bit of this dust off here. It could be a bit neater than this and just make sure you put it over something half sensible so it's not going to get everywhere. Unlike what I've just done there. There we go. And just dab that a little bit on those, those back two here. Again, if you think it's, so that's just gone on a little bit there. If you think it's a bit too much, just take the original brush we had. Just kind of work, feather that in a little bit. Just take off any excess, really. You know, and honestly, that's not going to be too far off for me. That I think that looks quite, quite effective. Um, once it's then on the aircraft, you can always do a little bit of fine finishing up in terms of weathering but for me it's as simple as that it just I think it looks looks reasonably realistic and provides a little bit of interesting uh, an interesting look to that part of the aircraft so I'll get on and do the other exhaust um, and then we can move on do a bit more here we are looking at the prop blades this time you can remember we uh, sprayed them that dark grey which is good um, I think any sort of dark grey colour is, is good to represent more of a kind of a scale black really, I think in that sense, especially again, out in this sort of theater, uh, all the paint tones are gonna have faded slightly at least. And so for me, dark gray is better than black any day of the week. Um, so now we need to do is paint the yellow tips, the little warning tips that you get on the tips of most or many uh, propeller blades. Okay, so first thing is, is that if you're tempted to hand paint these, don't. It never, ever seems to work. And I can't tell you the number of models I've looked at. And generally, you, know, you think, oh, that's a nice looking model. And then you start to look a bit closer. And in order to save time, I suspect, the modelers just try to hand paint these, uh, these tips. Well, I just, and it looks like they're hand painted. And I think it ruins the whole model, to be honest. It's that kind of significant. So for me, even if it's going to take sort of seconds to, to spray these, mask them out, spray them every single time. Um, it's always going to be, uh, be a result in a better finish. And for me, you can see what I'm doing here. All I've done is uh, um, cut off some simple pieces of Tamiya tape, masking, masking tape. Again, for me, it's the only tape to use for this at this point. Uh, and then you just fold it over to match up exactly with the other side. Quick little fold, there we go, and then you've got a perfect um, a perfect tip masked off. So each of the three uh, is the same in terms of distance. So a few extra little bits of masking tape, I think, to make sure that we um, cover the um, remaining bits of black, because the last thing you want to do is to uh, keep these on show and find that you've um, got some overspray from the yellow. A couple of times I thought I could get away with it. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> as soon as you take the masking tape off, there you go. You've got a very thin, very thin faint yellow um, band. Not clever uh, at all, really. Um, and it's so avoidable, that's the point. So just when you think you might be going to cut a corner, not really a very clever idea because usually it will come and bite you. So you don't want to don't want to do that. So I'm just picking some old bits of tape here that I had on the bench and just filling in those gaps. So that will be oops, 
quite big enough. And there we go. So that's all masked up now and, and good, to, good to spray. So I just get a big, uh, usually a, a um, barbecue skewer or something like that with a nice pointy end on the end, stab it through the hole, um, and then we will be good to, to spray those tips. Um, again, it's just a, just a choice really. You could use straight flat yellow, um, which is kind of okay. But, you know, for me, I think it's, um, again, it often looks just too bright. So why would you have a one part of it would weather, but the yellow wouldn't? It, it doesn't make sense to me. So not a bad color actually is a slightly off yellow and matte 24 in the Humble Crit range is quite a good color to use for this. Um, or you could use obviously some other preferred paint you might have to hand. But the idea is to get a slightly more faded toned down yellow rather than a big bright yellow, which might stick out a bit too much. Okay, so that's next and we can get on and deal with that and then we can come back and weather the prop blades. Okay, so the yellow tips have been sprayed and hopefully you can see that we've got a really nice faded yellow look. I, I, like, I like that kind of faded look, to be honest, to, to the tips of the props. So already the whole thing is look, beginning to look quite, um, quite nice. Um, and the next step is just like we did with the spinner is to kind of slightly distress the surface of the blades themselves. So again, we just take the old toothbrush and in line with the um, airflow, just work the surface. Not mad, you don't want to break them, but reasonably firmly just to begin that slightly distressed look. Again, it will slightly satin up the, uh, the finish, which is fine, like that, for the blades anyway. Hopefully you can begin to see they just got that slight kind of satin sheen coming up. Same on the uh, the back. Let's do the whole blade there. And that's... Um, that's that. So done a couple of stages so far. We haven't we? Or three really. We sprayed on the dark grey, sprayed the yellow tips, the slightly off yellow, the slightly toned down yellow, and now we've distressed the surface of the blades themselves. And then all that's left in, and this is your choice entirely, is to decide how much, um, if any, chipping you want to apply to the blade at this stage. Well, for me, I think it is worth applying something. Again, given the theatre of operations, I think all the sand that's knocking about, it would kind of be bizarre that these blades wouldn't have chipped in some or scratched up at some level. Again, it's only 48 scales, so don't want to go too mad. So for me, the first thing to do is just take the edge of an ordinary graphite pencil and just slightly work that along the edge here of the blade. Because what that does is just create that impression that this is a metal blade, not uh, not a wooden or any other type of blade. This is just a gentle part of the process. It's just along the edge, literally along that edge. Oh, go carefully because you don't want to go kind of too mad and put loads and loads of other marks all over it. Well, not yet anyway. We'll get to that in a minute. So both edges just steadily work round. Slightly rotate it, you might need to rotate it two or three times just to get the proper edge coverage. one coming up if you remember the count you know you should have done this six times for the 
an effect with the three blades, but there you go, front and back. Okay, so yeah, okay, that's about that's about it from the, from the edge point of view. And now all we need to do is just to add a little bit, I think, to again to the front. So look at the the angle. So um, I'm just trying to remember how this goes now onto the real thing. Um, I'm pretty sure it sits that way round. I think. Well, um, either way, just check which way round it goes, and then the uh, sort of leading edge in effect would take a little bit more chipping than. Um, and the trailing edge and again it's this sort of slightly sort of stabbing type motion here now the more you do this you just build up more chip and the less the less simple as that really a few little squiggles chips along the front edge and then on the actual blade itself I don't want to kind of go too mad here but I do want don't forget to include the yellow area as well that's the kind of kind of thing. I don't know how that's coming out. I hope you can see that. Get the idea. And you can just just work work away and do as much as you you feel is uh, is, is appropriate. Again, some sort of reference to pictures is is always going to be used as photographs. Just have a look and see. Well, you know, is there any kind of pattern that you've noticed on the real thing? terms of how they used to wear but it's very much a personal preference thing this much or as little as you like but as you can see actually it's quite quick it doesn't take too long and it's also important just to be random completely random with it because you know they're not you're not gonna get the same sort of chip in exactly on each blade so try and be a bit um, random with it you know okay so for one side if I just try and hold that around and move it slightly hopefully you can begin to see um, the effect it is subtle I mean I think it is subtle so unless you catch it full square in in bright light you're hardly going to notice it but for me that's exactly what I'm looking for in this scale I don't need it I don't well I didn't want to and don't want to go mad I just want to create um the the effect of chipped propeller blade you know and that's about it really so hopefully that's um that's about it so what we'll do is we'll um I'll just finish doing the other side and I'll assemble it so you can see the whole thing together and you can uh, take a view and see what see what you think okay so here's the completed prop assembly and I don't know you can you can decide yourself what do you what do you think i think for me i i like it i think it's just got that nice weathered look without being over the top and a little bit of chipping and should look really nice on our uh, completed uh, hurricane so we'll set that side uh, to dry now um and then when we come back the airframe should be ready for a bit more weathering so we'll come back and you can have a look <laughs> 